Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Randy Ryder channel. Uh, if you're wondering, uh, I'm in a car. Yep, I'm in a car. Total, total car. And if you wonder why, well, this is what it looks like outside. And uh, so I'm, I'm going somewhere where I actually need to look my best. I don't want to get off the bike looking like a hot mess because um, I'm going somewhere special and we will be there in a second. Stand by. So could I drive on this in the bike? Absolutely, and I have. Um, here's the problem. Anytime before I've done it, there has been hardly anyone on the road. So um, yeah, it's been quite the hot mess around here lately and people start thinking they can drive in the cars and really can't. So yeah, with all this ice and the road messed up, um, I'm going to take my time. Uh, not gonna be in a rush to get out on the bike because people will kill you. No matter how good your skills are, there are people on the road that are dumber than you. So you guys have always heard me say that uh, the bike can get you out of problems uh, easier than on, in a car. Because if you have a tight spot to fit to get out of the way of destruction, you can take that tight spot. But uh, in the ice, you're limited on maneuverability and speed and how fast you can accelerate and brake. And so people are dumb. So I'm going to, it's Mississippi. I don't have to wait a really long time to uh, get back on the road. The, the snow will be gone tomorrow actually and it's gonna rain <laughs> which rain in 50 you know that's my jam so that's what I'll be doing the rest of the week so I'll be back with fresh new content but for now um, I guess I can go ahead and tell you I was invited to Southern Thunder Harley Davidson to look at their bikes and do a little video and we all know what happens in uh, two days so today is the 21st on the 24th Harley will release the 2024 new lineup that has been very secretive. Um, we've seen the 2024 lineup, but there's sneaky stuff that they have not uh, let out to see the public. And I have got to see a picture uh, or two of their new stuff again. And they're so sneaky that it's like, this may be the bike we're releasing. And I'm pretty sure it is because the person I got it from is a very reputable source. Maybe they'll let me show you tonight. Maybe they'll wait until the 24th to let me release it, but it's gonna be fun. So let's go take a look. All right, we're down here at Southern Thunder Harley Davidson. I finally did make it here. So we're here with Zach. What's going on, guys? So, so I know we're gonna look at new, some of the new 2024s today, but tell me about the bike that's right here because I saw it online and actually fell in love with it. So this is a 1999 uh, Harley Davidson Road Glide, and uh, it's as Honestly, it's as, as basic as it gets, you know, this back in the day, this was the Road Glide, it had 88 cubic inch five speed. Uh, this was the uh, the crown jewel, you know, like it, like it still is today. The Road Glide is the number one uh, highway body. So it's got some minor features added to it. Uh, you've got the, uh, the back guards, you've got the railing on the top for that old school custom styling. Um, it's gonna have this, this vintage uh, theme to it, you know. A lot of people were putting the uh, the Indian feathers on their bikes back then. This one's got that on there. You get the old school Harley Davidson made in the USA. Eagles equal horsepower. Eagles equal horsepower. <laughs> I don't know about the '88, but this one's got uh, only 43,000 miles. I've got bikes in here that are 2018s, 2019s that have way more miles on them. With a cassette player. With a cassette player, I mean, you can't get more 80s than that. I was a, I was a CD player area, but cassette player is pretty cool. Still has an aux auxiliary cord on it too. I guess that's for a headphone jack. Very nice. Yeah, that's the I say plug in your. I don't know if you know about this, but yeah, when we had to start going over from cassette players to um, CD players or from A tracks, you could actually buy this cassette thing that actually would plug into your dash. You didn't have that. You had a you had a mailed mail auxiliary port. You could just mm -hmm. plug it in, but that's what we had to use in back in the old days. I remember the cassette cassette ones. All right, so that's enough of that. We're gonna go look at the 2024s because that's what I promised you. So let's go upstairs. All right, we made it upstairs. There were a few things that we had to cover up on the bikes that we can't show, but uh, let's look at the new bikes, and we have a couple of to compare them to. Well, first I guess we can look at the old version of this bike. So Zach, what tell us about it? Old version. 
All right, so this is a 2023 uh, Harley-Davidson Softail Breakout. Uh, this is the, uh, that year, 2023, is the year that they did a lot of major changes to this bike. Um, they uh, took the, the 114 out and slammed a uh, massive 117 cubic inch engine in it. Uh, they advertise that they're 126 foot-pounds of torque, and it's going to be most likely to the crank. Uh, mine, my 117 to the wheel pushed about 116 stock. What's that feel like? Uh, it feels pretty powerful. It's fun. You feel a lot of that off-the-line power. Uh, just with the stage, you know, just minor cam, minor exhaust, minor minor tune, uh, we cranked 130 foot-pounds out of mine. So it, it doesn't take a whole lot to build power with these guys. Uh, they changed the center console here and added the breakout badging on it. They also put the five gallon tank back on there. They used to have a three and a half gallon tank and that was my biz biggest pet peeve about that was uh, you had a massive engine, massive you know, soft tail, but you didn't have enough fuel you know, to go on, on trips or anything like that. Not that you would take the spike on a trip, but now you have a five gallon so you can cruise around a whole lot more. If you felt like your, your spine was uh, bulletproof, maybe you could. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could make it comfortable, but they added uh, cruise control on it too. Uh, 2023, a lot of the soft tails uh, got cruise control, uh, with the exception of the Street Bob and the uh, soft tail standard. And uh, traction control, they have added traction control. Now, I am, uh, I'm under the impression that it is not as intelligent as it is on the baggers. It's going to be like kind of your basic traction control setup. Uh, the baggers actually has a whole, a whole big intelligent system that's going to probably take a whole episode to cover. But yeah, anything's be, I, I got to rent a Road Glide Limited last year. Yeah, and it was like night and day. It's fun. It was crazy. So comparing it to 2024, no major changes, just paint colors. So we've got this beautiful color here. This is called Blue Burst. So you know Harley's been doing a lot of reds lately. I guess we're going back into that blue segment, and uh, blue is one of my favorite colors. Anyway, my favorite color. Yeah. Uh, this one has a lot of flake in it. Uh, reminds me a lot of the 2017 color called Superior Blue, except for it's got a lot of flake in it, like Reef Blue, which we had in 2022. Man glitter. Man glitter. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I, I painted so I got a, I got a 21 Sportster with a three and a half gallon or three point one gallon tank, and I put the five gallon tank on it, painted it almost exactly this color. So yes, I'm I'm in love with this color, and the black trim just kind of sets it off. Oh, yeah. actually look gorgeous. They did a great job on these breakouts. They have a perfect blend between chrome and black. It has a good uh, selection of both. I personally like blacked out bikes, but this one also looks really badass. Uh, this here is the, uh, the 2024 Tri-Glide Ultra. We haven't seen any changes really on these guys. Um, just paint colors. They've been kind of the same since 2021. Uh, the only change they did in 2021 was they got rid of the clutch, uh, hydraulic clutch, and added a clutch cable. Since then, it's been relatively the same. So, you know, as Harley progressively does these new uh, fairing styles, I'm sure eventually down the line they'll probably switch things up, but it usually takes a while for everything to trickle down. Uh, this paint color is called Red Rock in Vivid Black Two Tone. It's kind of a clay color. Uh, online, it's kind of hard to get a good justification of it. It looks more of a crimson online, but it's actually more of a clay color. It's, it's unorthodox from Harley to do something of this style, so I think a lot of people will appeal to it. Like I said, I'm more of a blue guy, but it's not a bad color. Yeah, I'd take it. If somebody offered it to me as a media bike and said, ride this for a while, tell us what you think, yeah, I'd take it. I'd it's ride fine. anything. It's fine. This here is the uh, Tri-Glide in Blue Burst which is my favorite color this year so far. I know everybody makes fun of trikes and says, oh, they're old man bikes, I'll never get a trike, two wheels or nothing. But you gotta, you gotta start thinking, some of these guys, these Harley aficionados, have been already riding for 60 years. And uh, I think they've earned their, their stripes. So when they get into their 80s and they still wanna ride, this is a very viable option. And this will keep, keep I mean, you're upright, <laughs> you're still on a bike, you've still got the rumble of the open road. I'm actually so, seeing it with younger crowds too. We're seeing a lot of younger guys getting into bikes and not necessarily wanting to ride two wheels and they're going to three wheels. I'm much rather than more see of a safer, viable slingshot. option. Mm -hmm. Still cooler than a slingshot. Absolutely. <laughs> so this is the Road Glide 3 here, uh, 2024. Now 2023 was the first year of this one, just like the, the major changes that we had on the breakout. Uh, this is essentially a freewheeler with a Road Glide fairing on the front, which is really cool. Um, 
when it comes to a trike, I don't really see a big difference on fairing as you would on a two-wheel bike with the road glide versus the uh, the uh, the uh, bat wing fairing. Mm -hmm. But on this one here, you have the weight on the forks versus the road glide you don't so it still rides like a freewheeler but with wind protection which is really cool yep. really and I, still nice. like this, I still like this better that's why i like that 99 down there it's just there's just a such a huge difference in styling and how it looks and how it feels when you ride it retro and that's the word i was looking retro for we, who, who does like retro every every year the retro it, it's funny every year there, there's a retro but it just it's retro from 30 years before and it's always cool because people remember things that they saw before I forgot to I forgot to not look on that, but I will edit it out. That's okay. Speaking of retro, you know, uh, a, lot, a lot of their colors, especially on like their Sportster models, are a throwback to their '80s AMF days. The they AMF had the little colors. stripes. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. It is, those look very cool, and I remember those days. I mean, yeah. those when those bikes were new. Yeah. And it's funny to see people like uh, Jared Weems and some of these other people dig up these old '70s bikes, and they're putting the AMF stripes on them. And it's like that is just so cool. Yeah. Very I neat. actually I, I like them too. I'm a very retro guy. I've even got a, a, a '80s themed Harley jacket down there that I wear all the time. So what we got here? So this is a 2024 Ultra Limited. So we know as of right now that the Limiteds, Road Glide and uh, Electric Glide, and the Road King are carryover models at this point in time. Um, we'll wait till the 24th to see the new stuff. But this is called Shark Skin Blue, and this is another one of my favorite colors. Um, it reminds me a little bit of Gunship Gray, which is a color we had in 2022, but it's got that blue tint to it. It almost, it looks like, it looks like a shark. It does look cool. So I'm curious to see what it's going to look like on a, uh, on a road glide. Uh, but as of uh, changes wise, we don't have any major changes. Uh, 2023, they did change the tank badge to a black Chrome or Mercury, however you want to call it. Yeah, that's a throwback too. That, that is that's a well. throwback to the 20s and 30s. That's a so way back retro look. On the Triglide, has a similar badging on it as well, and it's also a throwback to when they first introduced the Triglide. It is very neat. <laughs> but other than that, like I said, no changes really uh, made on them except for color. So what do you think, so obviously the dealers are just in the dark as, as everybody else. What do you think the changes are going to be come uh, January 24th? What are they going to introduce? Well, so I, this is just my, um, my thoughts and what I've seen, you know, posted around. But I am pretty confident that they're probably going to be doing away with trim models on the road glide and the street glide. So what I think is going to happen, we're just going to have a CVO road glide and street glide and then a road glide and street glide. And uh, they're going to kind of standardize the uh, the trims, okay. which uh, I hope that they standardize, you know, the prices as well. So hopefully the, to balance all that out. So used to be you could come in, get an ST, get a special, get a standard, you know. But I think everything's going to be all one standardized thing now. I think that'll be better for the consumer because there won't be such a huge variance of prices and and. Uh... You know, you got to pick through them to see what you got. This this is probably easier for the consumer. It'll probably let the prices come down too, because you they won't have to have so many different things in in the factory to specialize each bike. Yeah, so I think exactly. In the long run, I think it'll be better. And it's probably going to increase, you know, custom custom uh, customized parts as well. So you know, everything's going to be a blank canvas. Uh, that's kind of how the Sportsters were. You know, the Sportsters are the most customized bike in Harley's lineup, and you know, for the longest, they they've always been kind of cookie cutter. You know, they have few different models, same same look, everybody makes it look different. I like this color. I like these stripes. So this is fast, Johnny. <laughs> this was last year's uh, custom color. Uh, we didn't we didn't see a custom color for 23 like we did 22 and 21, uh, where it was available on several different models. Uh, the Fast Johnny edition was only available on your ST models, so that would be your Lowrider ST, your Road Glide ST, and your Street Glide ST. And uh, it pays homage to, there's a lot of history in that paint uh, and that Fast Johnny name. So, and uh, actually, if you come over here to the other side, I don't know if you saw it, but it's actually got Johnny the Pig. And Johnny the Pig is actually Harley Davidson's racing mascot. Yeah. Oh, very cool. I didn't notice that. And uh, a lot of people think that these stripes are stickers, but they are actually painted 
on there. Same as Johnny the Pig. Everything is painted onto the tank bags and fairing and fenders. Which uh, increases the value. Oh yeah. The original paint has always been worth something, but now when you repaint something, they want, you know, it, you just decrease the value of it by a third, sometimes a half, because they want original paint job, original patina, original rust, and it's just crazy to me they want everything original now for, well, for, you know, to have the big value. It depends on what you're going to do it for. I know me personally, if I'm looking for, a, for it, whether it's a bike or a car, I'm looking for something that is blank so that I know, I know what's been done to it. But if you got a crazy modified bike, car, whatever, there's no telling what's ever been done to it. That so, makes a lot of sense. and if you like to accessorize your things, which I do, I like to personalize everything I have. Um, I would like to know everything that goes into it, so I have a list. That makes a lot of sense. So tell me about this thing. I just noticed the that. <laughs> yep. So this is the 2023 CBO. They got released kind of uh, released kind of in the middle of the year. And uh, they did a lot of changes, and I have a feeling that this is probably what's going to be happening to our 2024s. It's not confirmed yet, so I don't know for sure, but it's, uh, it's looking that way. So you think that 121 uh, engine the... is going to be a... That, yeah, that looks really different. <laughs> yeah, so they changed the styling. You know, um, 2014, the Rushmore project was released. That's where we got the vented batwing fairing. That's where we got the one-touch saddlebags. That's where we got the boom infotainment center with navigation. And uh, it looks like it's going that way again for 2024. We're getting that same, you know, overhaul of the of the street glide and the road glide. So they changed the uh, the batwing fairing here. They actually integrated the lights into the fairing as far as your turn signals go. I like that. Um, they added a inverted fork system. And I'm a huge fan of an inverted fork. Me too. They also changed the bag styling to more of that performance bagger look, which seems to be the going trend these days. We're getting away from those stretch bags. We're going into those performance bagger builds. All that is is us Dyna guys growing up. That's all it yeah. is. <laughs> but all the, guys, the Dyna guys that grew up bought the, uh, the STs. Yep. And uh, they did a lot of technological advances on the uh, on the engine itself. They took an existing platform and just kind of made it better. Uh, we've got a uh, 121 cubic inch Milwaukee 8. And I don't know the exact horsepower numbers, but I know it's over 100. Uh, I want to say it's somewhere around the 120 range. Um, but they added variable valve timing, which is really great. So no matter what range you are in the RPM range, you're always going to have that peak performance power and efficiency. Nice. So, uh, as a, a buddy of mine who, I don't know if you know, riding and wrenching. I'm going to look him up. Okay, yeah, riding and wrenching. He's a local um, local creator, and uh, he has a road glide version of this, and he says that he is getting almost 50 plus miles per gallon and still getting all this uh, performance out of it, too. Yeah, that is, that's, even on the Hondas, that's something I've noticed. I had a, had a 2004 um, Honda Sabre, and when I took, it got 45 to 48 miles a gallon. When I put a Sabre exhaust on it, it went down to 25. Yeah. And it was like, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. But yeah, that's good. You can do actually some performance stuff now and keep your mileage. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They also changed the infotainment center. It's a lot wider. Uh, it looks more of like what you would expect to see out of, a, uh, out of an automobile. So It looks like the BMW, the new BMW R18 uh, yeah. infotainment. Uh, and it's pretty cool, too. You also have the uh, media shelf here. You know, oh, the nice. street glides have always had that little bitty door, and you never could fit your phone <laughs> in it. Uh, I'll just put mine in there, for instance. That's roomy. I got two keys, a phone, and it closes all the way. That's very roomy. I like so that. You took the keys out, you probably fit two phones, two more phones in there. <laughs> Maybe an iPad, or you could conceal carry in it if you wanted to. Allegedly. 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 <laughs> got to have your CBO badging. So the uh, display setting that it's in right now is going to be your touring uh, setup. And I'll show you in a minute how to uh, to change that. Let me come over to the other side. You got a full tank of gas. Where can we ride this to? Probably ride it wherever you want. Here's a question. How do you get these up here? Up the straight elevator? elevator? Yes. Nice. Okay. I don't wonder that. All right. So here's our settings. We can come over here to our display. And we can do the layout. So it's got three different layouts. My personal favorite is cruise. That honestly to me feels more sporty. So you have your speedometer, RPMs. You got uh, various information in between all that, and you can have your music, navigation, whatever you want to throw up in the middle. Uh, let me go back. 
You can see it's very responsive, just like the GTS system from uh, last year's generation, or uh, 2022's generation and older. That's your Sport. Sport's nice because you can have this all integrated speedometer and you can have two different things going on either side. So if you want your music and navigation, you can do that. Uh, you can fully customize that however you want. And I keep backing this out of it. And then of course we have Tor. So Tor gives you just the basic information you need while you're riding so that you have a more, um, a larger uh, navigation section. Or music if you want to put music on there too. Of course you got your bike lock and unlock. Nice. And you got your infotainment. You can turn it on and off as well. Now it also has, if you have a smart home, you can add a garage door to it oh, nice. via home link. Mm -hmm. What's really cool this year about the Lowrider S and the Lowrider ST is um, the Lowrider S model is the only one you can get the shark skin on out of the two uh, Lowrider models. So that's the shark skin blue that we saw earlier on the Limited. No major changes on these either from 2023 to 2020, uh, 2024. Now 2022 is where we saw the biggest update on this, uh, on this bike. You know the uh, old school lowriders always have their gauges here on the center console. Mm -hmm. There was two. There was a uh, speedometer and an RPM meter. They have relocated it to the uh, handlebar. I personally like it. It's kind of a, a mixed feeling about it. Some people like that old school look, but me, I'm a performance oriented rider, so I like to be able to see this without having to look down on my yeah. tank, which is nice. That's, that's a lot. That's a lot to look down on when you're in a city, especially when you're in city driving. Mm -hmm. It takes you off the road for too long. They added the 117 cubic inch Milwaukee 8 in 2022. So the uh, Land Rider S and ST got a really big, uh, well, the ST was introduced in 2022. The S got a big overhaul. Um, they've always had the inverted fork since 2020. But um, 2023, they started adding cruise and traction control from the factory, like I said earlier, on almost your soft tails. So uh, this here is a soft tail standard, and it is in billiard gray. Now, while billiard gray is not an entirely new color, uh, it was part of a two-tone option of 2023. It's now the base color option for all bikes uh, for 2024. So black or gray is the new black. <laughs> It comes primed and ready to paint. Yep. <laughs> I actually like it over the gunship gray. This honestly gives me more of that naval, um, well, maybe not naval, it gives me more of that Air Force gray. No, this is navy gray. Is it? That's navy gray. Okay. Yep. That's me how I know. Uh, you, you were in the navy. I, I retired from the navy. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's, that's navy gray. It, well, it gives me more of that military gray look, you know, that naval gray, in my opinion, or Air Force. I'm actually uh, pretty impressed with it over, over um, you know, it's, it's nice having another color other than black as your base too, so yeah. uh, hopefully black will no longer be the V2 paint job. Yeah, they, I think Harley's suffered enough jokes about every bike in the parking lot being black. Well, I like to blend in, so that's why my bike's black. <laughs> this is the ST in Red Rock. You can get it on the Lowrider S as well, but like I said, the ST does not come in the uh, shark skin gray. You've got black, you have billiard gray, and you have red rock available on the ST. So for somebody who rides all winter long, is there a way to, to uh, do, is, do plugs come for these holes where you can block them off in the winter? They, um, I've seen on a lot of the, um, the soft tail pages and the low rider pages of someone coming up with vents for them or block, blocks for them. Yeah, probably easy to 3D print. I have a uh, I have a lowrider S. I don't have the ST, so I don't really I have the the issue of not having any wind protection whatsoever. So the ST debuted in uh, 2022, and uh, they took an existing platform, the lowrider S, and kind of merged it with the Sport Glide. Put the saddlebags on the back. These are always been known as the Sport Glide bags. I call them the clamshell bags, and they're really nice. They can be removed on the fly with this unlock and locking system here. They have levers just like the big baggers do. One touch. It uh, has a fixed fairing. So this is kind of a modern, what is it, the FXRP? Modern FXRP. And this bike has kind of taken, taken the soft tail industry by storm. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of people doing some crazy builds on it. I call it a baby road glide. 
<laughs> What's really nice about it is, is it's a mid-sized cruiser, so if you don't really want to get into that big bagger, you know, um, class yet, and you're you just wanting to kind of have that performance-oriented ride, you can ride this bike around town, but hey, if your buddies want to go on a trip, you can load it down, go on a trip, maybe a three, four-hour trip somewhere. I have three friends that had this bike, and we have ridden them everywhere. They've got the 23s. Oh, nice. So we've ridden them from... Two of them, one of them lives in Ohio, one of them lives in Jersey, one of them is down actually in Tampa, and uh, they have ridden them everywhere. And we ride we them down to Florida all the time, and they've ridden them all over the states. They've ridden them to see me, they've ridden them to see into Nashville, to see some other people we know there. And they are a very popular, very comfortable bike. I make fun of them all the time for this being the new, you know, the new Dyna, but it's, it's, it's a sweet bike. I am very, uh, I'm, very, I'm very biased to this platform because I own one, so. Uh, for those of you that don't know, the when he says the new Dyna, the Dyna was discontinued in 2017. <laughs> but uh, they took uh, the Dyna and the Softail and kind of blended it together. So, you know, the old school Softail frame, you used to have your shocks. You had two of them running underneath the frame here. What really a whole lot you could do with it. Uh, they were known to be, you know, comfort. So if you just wanted to cruise around and kind of be comfortable, that's what you bought a Softail for. But if you wanted to go out there and, and you know, kind of shred the road, do some wheelies, hit some corners. You bought a Dyna. That was the performance oriented bike back then. So they took both of those and blended it together. So you have the comfortability of a soft tail and you have the performance of a Dyna. So it has a mono shock that runs underneath the seat and it kind of runs pretty parallel with the frame here. Probably the best thing they've done to the soft tails in quite some time. Very nice. And I like how Harley, you know, they'll take a bike, make it look like a hard tail, secretly place comfort devices in them mm -hmm. where you can still ride them and still look badass but not break your back for sure so yeah it's and there is a lot of custom customizable parts for this bike as well this is a very popular platform i do love this bike all right let's go look at something else all right so if you had to pick any bike and i've already had you take it out we're going to leave this as a surprise to everybody else but what is your favorite bike in the whole store so right now in the entire store, this is my favorite bike. This is the Dyna Lowrider Max. And in my opinion, this is the king of all Dynas and the, the father to the Softail Lowrider S. So like I said upstairs, remember this is how the gauge setup used to be. You had your speedometer and you had your RPM gauges on your, on your center uh, console there. But what, what stands out on the Dyna Lowrider S versus the Softail Lowrider S, and the, uh, the Softail Lowrider S is a very impressive bike, very powerful, very refined uh, machine. But if you just want something that's just loud, proud, just obnoxious. crashes around, obnoxious, obnoxious <laughs> just absolutely raw Harley Davidson, the Dyna is it. It's, it's the king. And uh, this, this is the one that started, started everything. Not necessarily the, the Lowrider S, but the, the Dyna itself is what started the club style theme or the West Coast styling. And um, that's obviously my, my type of bike, my culture. So I am. this is my favorite. They have the 110, the Screaming Eagle 110. A lot of your CBO guys are mad because you had Dyna rolling around with 110 cubic inch motors. What's wrong with that? <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong nothing with that. that. I have a friend who has a bike very similar to this, except he has apes on it. So, how are the Dave? Uh, yeah, this is for you, buddy. Obviously, I would choose a different exhaust. Those are going to be obnoxiously loud, and as I've gotten older, I'm not really into the old, you know, super loud theme. About five years ago, I probably would have been ripping the streets with it. What's up with that? So, yeah, this is a gorgeous bike. So, so uh, is this heated grips? Yes. Yeah. So, fun fact about the, uh, the Dyna uh, Lowrider S, it was the only Dyna to get cruise control from the factory. So they made this bike two years, 2016, 2017, and uh, it, came from, it came with cruise control, and it also has an electronic throttle by wire instead of the throttle cables. The rest of the Dynas did not have that. Nice. Seems like they went a little above and beyond on this. Somebody at the factory really loved Dynas. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> this was, like I said, it was the king of the Dynas. It had everything. Uh, it had the premium Dyna shock from the factory. Also came, like I said, with the 110. Came with the uh, breather. This is the stock breather for this bike. So we already had a heavy breather on it. All you had to do was change the exhaust and tune it. And 
you had a stage one. So you've ever, have you had any problems with uh, getting water in it when you ran it? Well, you wouldn't want to ride that filter in the rain. Yeah, you'd suck in water. That's You'd have to put a rain sock on there. So does the Muslim sock come with the bike, or did it, uh, do you have to buy that separately? I actually don't know. I know you can buy them all over Dennis I wasn't, Kirk and uh, everybody else, but... I wasn't in the industry when this bike came out. Right. So I didn't get to see this thing brand new. Actually, I had just graduated high school. Well, I've been out of high school for a few years after after this bike came out, or before this bike came out. You know, it's gorgeous bike. Looks like somebody either dropped it or ran it into something, but it looks very doable. Looks like they were leaning pretty hard. Somebody laid it over. Mm -hmm. Took some took some road skids on it, but that's okay. It gives a character. And it's a used bike. And it's up for sale. So if somebody wants this bike, who are they gonna talk to? They gonna talk to me, Zach. <laughs> Will you let the it one go? And only. <laughs> Will you let them buy it? Maybe. Uh, depends. It's got to go to a good home. It's got to go to somebody that appreciates the Dyna just as much as I do. Very cool. All right, Zach, thanks for showing us around. Absolutely. All right. We're going to have to go home now because if I keep looking at these bikes, I'm probably going to end up buying one. So uh, we're going we're gonna to fold it up for now. So that'll be all for this video. Like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye-bye. Like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell.